Hey, we're turners. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and welcome to my shop. Yeah, I'm getting my battle gear on, and I want to tell you a few things about wood turning. We taking no prisoners. I was going to say something about Kimosabi, but I'm not sure what that means. But if you want to know more, all you got to do, you know the deal, you got to watch. We're going to start chatting about why I've got on my war headband. Number one, my wife thinks it looks better. If the bow's off to one side and it's cocked a little bit, you know, so my delicate side can come out. I say put it around back and snug it down, and then we take a, a white out and we, we kind of, you know, we put some battle marks on and some black stuff on their cheeks because we're getting ready to go to SWAT. I don't have any SWAT gear, so we're just going to go this way. SWAT, Southwest Association of Turners. Now, this is a group of maybe 30 clubs. Yeah, 30 clubs in Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Alabama, East Jabib, and way out there. But these clubs have gotten together and put put on a great, and I use this term lightly, great wood turning show. Yes. Uh, it's all about, it's all from wood turners. It's all about wood turners. It's to help wood turners. And there's no politics. Really it's not, it's not like, oh we can't do that because maybe they may be able to talk about Indians. No, that, that doesn't happen and they don't let the Indians bring the horses in. So you're okay. Now, where went here? Details. August 24th to 26th through the 28th. 26th to 28th, the last weekend of August 2016. It happens in Waco, Texas at the Waco Convention Center. That's eh, pretty much down in the heart of everything in Waco. They got a huge Hilton on one side and I think a courtyard or something on the other side. But there's hotels all around Waco because they got a big football stadium there. And all those people come in to watch the football games. So there's a lot of hotels. Now, it doesn't cost that much, like 125, 135, something like that. Hey, you need the details about all the costs and everything? Go to this website right here. Woodturns.org, okay? Um, that's not it. Not we'll turn this out org. If, uh, right here again. All right, go to that website, and you can register there too. You can pay for it and everything right there. Click registration. It brings up all the cost. And if you bring the wife along, you have to pay full price for her. Now if she brings you along. She has to pay full price for somebody. So I'm not trying to cheat it too bad. Now here's the beauty of it. These guys attract some of the best wood turning talent in the entire world to this show. I'm talking about professional turners that you, you pay a lot of money to go to a bigger show. And then when you go to the bigger shows, there's always that parking thing. 15, 20 bucks a day to park. And then there's that food thing. That's another 15, 20 dollars a day to get a lunch. You don't have that at SWAT. Swat, you park in a public parking lot out front or across the street. It's not that far of a walk. <clears throat> Pardon me, and it's all handicapped accessible. And there's a lunch provided. All you do is pay for it. It's not that bad. In fact, it's pretty good food. I've eaten that place four or five times. It's really good. Now, besides the demonstrators, this show brings in some great vendors. And this show is going to be right after the big AAW show that will cost you an arm and a leg in, in Atlanta. I'm not knocking AAW. It's just that it does cost a lot to go to, go to an AAW show. So there's no politics here. There's no profit to be made. They just got to keep going on and on and on. They're not paying for a magazine. They're not paying for this. They're not paying for that. They're just paying for a good show. Now, <clears throat> you eat there on Friday, and then you eat there again on Saturday, and then Saturday night you attend the banquet to see who won the show, the show? I didn't tell you that, huh? All right. The show is if you want to see some awesome wood turning art. They've got a meeting hall that's 
huge and it's full of tables and they're full of art and you're not seeing the same piece over and over and over and over and over again. You're seeing the work of the guy of your quality, of my quality. Yeah, there are some out there of my quality, yes. But they put their work out to show what they can do. And that shows what you can do with the tools you have in your shop. And the ideas are right here. So you get in that show, unlike some of the others I've been to, you take a zillion pictures of something. And, and if you want to know what the size is, get a dollar bill. Got a dollar bill. Get it. Here it is. This is my measuring device. A 3 by 5 card. You can hold it up next to something, take a picture. Here's your reference. It's 3. There's 5. Put marks on it. You can even bring a big wide stick rule that you made at your own house that will show folks what you're thinking about. And right now I just not found the power adapter I didn't know I had out here. Isn't it nice how these things work out? Shop is a wreck. I mean coming down with I have an ear infection so I haven't been able to move around out here. Uh, we got the canopy about 99% done which means I can come out here and get back under the canopy and do some stuff like bring the trash cans up go through these boxes and these things. Oh yeah, you wish you could go through my trash in the next couple of weeks because I'm getting rid If I ain't touching it, oh I haven't touched it in almost two years, if I ain't touching it again right away, it's leaving. I'm not keeping it around. I need to bring in some new wood. But we'll get to that in a minute. Here it is. I'm telling you about SWAT, Southwest Association of Turners, a conglomerate of clubs that get together to benefit wood turning. Not a club, not an organization, nothing else. Wood turning. You will love it. That's where I met that cute little girl from Charleston, South Carolina, who's an awesome wood turner. I met David Ellsworth there. Gorse Two Pluses. Before he passed away, Gorse went there a couple of times with us. Um, the best people in the world in the art show up there. Why? Because it's a fun time. And I started to tell you about the tools. All the tools that went out and got show, shown, went out and got shown, yeah, at Atlanta, they'll be over here. All the manufacturers will be there. There won't be a crowd, not like the crowd you had over there. And if you want to, you can play with it. There's lace everywhere. You can play with it. It is a fun, fun time. Again, go to this website right here. Look them up. Make your reservation, find a hotel, and oh, here's another hit. If you get it, if you go to one of those ones that's advertised on TV, and you see them every day, uh, where you, you want to get a hotel and you look at all the options, mm, you know, if you give up $3 a day, you might be giving up a $6 breakfast because you and the wife can eat at the breakfast if you have the primary ticket or reservation. If you have the secondary reservation, they don't honor it. It's funny how it works, but it's all business. You know, so watch how you get the reservations. And if you're a veteran, get your discount. If you're AAA, get your discount. If you're, what's the one that's retired? AARP, get your discount. Ask for it. You know, all they can do is tell you, no, they can't take you out back and beat you with a stick. Mm -hmm. This is Texas. I'd ask nice about it, okay? So, I got a couple other things to talk to you about. Yeah, don't go anywhere. Hey, the newsletter is back. The newsletter, what is it? Okay, I was writing a monthly newsletter. And since I recovered from my stroke... You can tell I recovered. I'm wearing stuff like this. Uh, I try. And I realized that I was putting out three or four or five. I think I had seven. I counted. They never went anywhere. Then I found out that Yahoo sold the rights to manage my website or traded it to somebody else. And I was putting it up there, but they wasn't getting there because... It was a half of a gig too big or whatever. All right, now. I went back the other day and I put one up. and had some photographs. You guys all send me pictures. 
I had to take all the pictures off because it was too big. So then I printed it as a PDF because my Mac will do that. That didn't work. It's still too big. I had to go back and take some more out. I have a newsletter on the front page of my um, website, eddiecastellan.com, in case you didn't know. It's right here, eddiecastellan.com. I put a newsletter up there. It's got some tips and hints and stuff on it. I get a lot of phone calls. People call me at 504-715-0512 every day. And they're asking this or asking that. And I, hey, you know what? I don't mind it. And it's either that or sitting on the porch watching the girl across the street in a really tight shirts wash her car. That's one clean car. Yeah. But you can call me. And I'll talk to you about the situation. Or I'll refer somebody. Guy called the other day. I'm looking at the Salesworth cows. These guys get in. And what do you recommend? I said, none of them. They're all selling on a name. Go to Don, go to David D. Way Tools. Cheaper, better, better detailed, exact. And he knows what the tool does because he uses the tool. He's not a cute little girl in Baltimore sitting there answering the telephone saying, Hi, this is D. Way Tools. How may we assist you? No. It's like when you call me at Big Guy Productions, EddieCastellan.com. The cute little girl answers the phone. It's my wife. And it's only when I'm too busy to answer the phone. I hear it ringing in there now. Hold on, I'll get back to you. All right now. But in the newsletter, we talked about a couple of things you can do. One is make your own face plates. Now, this is a really dense piece of wood. See this? It's heavy, it's dense, it's got good grain structure to it. See that? Okay. Now, this is a rough thin block. What did I do? I roughed it in, <clears throat> and then I flipped it over and I drilled a hole. Now this is going to go on my one way. So to go on my one way, should have done that, huh? I'm going to go up here and get the air truck. Put on my safety glove. That's what I did. And cleaned it off. Now that is a... 33 millimeter nut. And I gotta order these. The Hard the Ace Hardware store on the corner, they get them for me. But they stock one inch number eights, three quarter sixteens, one and a quarter eights. They have all those in stock in the bin. I didn't say Home Depot now. I did say hardware store. A lot of people don't know that they still around and they still have an inventory. And you need to support them because when Home Depot decides to drop this whole line, you're out of luck. So, I took the, the thing. I drilled the hole in my forstner bit. Just about three quarters of seven eighths of an inch in the thick. See, I got a little bit of steel standing up. You want that, okay? Then I pressed my nut. The nut has got tape on the bottom and tape on the top. And I pushed it down in that block, tapped it tight. And then I poured the epoxy around it. See it? I just poured it in there. I don't get cheap on the epoxy. Now, this didn't come from the K&B or drugstore around the corner. This is good stuff. I get it from Penn State Industry. It's slow curing. That really rapid curing stuff, eh, air pockets, not a good gap. It won't flow. Medium thick super glue. I mean, uh, epoxy. Did I say I didn't mean to say super glue. Don't hold it against me. Okay. Then you flow it in it. You put it away and let it cure. I put this away two years ago. Just found it the other day. Now what I'll do now is take a chisel, clean up that ring, get it off there, clean that up. Then I'll be able to mount this on, a, on the lathe and spin it and true it up, shape it up. What I have? I have a wooden block that I can work to. I can put a face plate on it, not a face plate, pardon me, another plate of wood. Let's get one down there. I can take another plate. It's got a center reference on it. Put it up against it. Glue it on there. Or screw it on there. Then work from that. Here's a deal I'm trying to get to you. I get calls all the time from guys that want to that say, I've got a faceplate. Really, I do too. And I can't do anything with it. I don't mean to turn my back on the talk, but 
Thought I'd reach around and find one. That didn't work. Okay. I got the dinky little cast on face, but I don't know what to do. Make an adapter. If you can't make one of these because it's just b beside you, make an overplate for your steel thing. Then work from that. Where does that come in at? Okay. You know, I was on vacation for almost two years with the stroke. And I call it a vacation because some days it's hard to put A in front of B. But it's coming back. It really is. I can almost do the whole alphabet now. Not making funny, guys. It's just the way it is. Here's the deal. I couldn't remember the names of my granddaughters and my grandson. And one of my daughters stood right in front of me in the hospital when I was supposed to be well. I didn't know she was one of my daughters. I thought she was a friend of my other daughter that just came to visit with her. And then my sister-in-law, I thought she worked there. So those things happen. And they all get better. But it takes T-I-M-E, time. And I was incapable of understanding how much time and how long it would take. So I consider it to be my very lengthy vacation. I got a faceplate. I have a bowl. I need to put a pocket on that bowl. I can push up against that faceplate, just like this. I can put a piece of padding on this. I can round the corners a little bit, just soften them a little, and I can push against it with my tailstock in place or my easy touch in place. That's something I created that goes on your tailstock. And I can finish this bowl. I don't need Coles jaws. I don't need an adapter. I don't need. I got it all. It's all right here in the shop. Now, I said I'd put a a a, 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 a pad on it, and I really don't know where they are, but they'll pop up. Home Depot sells the stuff they put on these white plastic, these white wire shelves. Go to the section where they sell shelving for kitchens and stuff. and get the white shelves. They make a pad that rolls over the top of them. It's a quarter inch thick. It's white plastic or beige plastic. Great pad. Slip it on this. Put your bowl up against it. No marks. No burns. No. It's really, really nice. Really is. So you went from a nut at a hardware store, a box from Penn State, a block of wood, some soft touch, and you created something to push your bowl up against. Now take all that other stuff away and go back back to the block again. You've got a block that you can glue to, you can bolt to, you can bolt on to, etc. etc. You want to bolt the block of wood and then turn a bottle stopper out of it? Great. Drill a hole straight through the center, but do it on your lathe. Hole straight through the center, put your carriage bolt in, push it out over here, make sure it's not too long. If it is, put a couple of washers on this side. Push it back on it, you can tighten the thing down, you can turn it, and if your tool touches the, the holder, it's wood. So you're all right. And you can put a ring on there about the size you want that you don't want to go under, and then you know. A few little things. I think what you're going to understand is I'm like the blue collar guy when it comes to turning. I want you to turn, but I don't want you to spend a lot of money on it. I want you to turn, but I don't want you to fall victim to these guys that are only out to make money on it. I want you to turn, I want it to be fun, and most of all, I don't want you to get hurt. Can we talk straight? Most of y'all about my age, I'm 67 years old. Here's the deal, if I get hurt significantly on this lathe, I'm not going to go back out to it again. In fact, right now, when I pick up a pencil or an ink pen, my mind won't let me orient it right. I have to orient it with my other hand. That's why I'm afraid to turn on a lathe. I think it'll get better if I get idea of working with some things. But if that doesn't improve, I won't be turning. Because once you get hurt, there's an internal fear, which is a good thing, that says, don't get hurt again. So I'm going to show you these tips and tricks, and I'm always going to tell you, it's all about not getting hurt. If you see other guys that show you these shortcuts that are going to save you all this time, what else you got? You got time! So, you know, let's just keep that in mind. Alright. If 
paste plates. Oh, another thing. Do you see what I'm missing? Come on. Come on. Cut. And the third row. That guy's got it. No jewelry. Nope. I talked to a guy the other day that said he's pretty sure he'll be able to go back in the shop and turn again. His ring got caught in his chuck. And I said, the ring in your nose? And he was kind of offended. And I said, because don't tell me you were wearing a ring while you're working in the shop. Oh, yeah, I'm married. My wife and sister wear my ring. <clears throat> Guys, you're in your 60s. Does your wife really believe that that ring on your finger means you won't look at the other girl and the other girl won't look at you? I want you to tell me where you live because I want to see those girls that look at you at 60 years old. All right. Take the jewelry off. Take the watch off. Take the rings off. You don't have to impress me by showing me a picture of you turning wood with your ring on. In fact, when I see the ring, I get away from the picture. I can't see an accident happening. So, no, I don't want to know about it. I don't want you to save me a picture of it. Nothing. Take the ring off. If it won't come off, think of what will happen when it makes contact with the ball on that on that on that uh, that that scroll chuck. It will take your finger off. I was a construction superintendent for 42 years. In that period of time, I cut several rings off, guys. I had one guy come back after three weeks, and he says, "I'm going to Ramsey's to get me a new diamond ring for my." My wife. And I said, why? What do you got to do that for? Well, she wants me to have a ring on to prove I'm married. I said, you proved you're married by going home every day. You prove you're married by not... Well, I can't get into that. You prove you're married by everything else except that ring. That doesn't do it. And I have a watch. I got a freaking clock. I don't need a watch. I, don't wear, I wear one for exercise because my kids tell me I have to. But get away from all that. Get rid of it. Don't lose a finger. Don't get hurt. Don't worry about how to cut it off. And I worked with a carpenter maybe 30 years ago. He was a real master. And he had a pair of lineman pliers in his pocket. And I asked him, I thought I had a pair here. I said, what do you have that in your pocket for? And they were diagonal cutters. Big one. He said, because I might have to cut somebody's ring off today. I said, so you carry that? And he said, I'm the permanent buddy. I'm the guy that's there. I know when to put ice on it, when to cut the ring off, how to get you to the hospital. He said, I've done enough of it. I don't want to keep doing it, but it looks like it keeps coming back to me. I bought a ring cutter that night at the supply store. At the medical supply company around the corner from my house. I bought a ring cutter. Well, things slip it in, turn it. And I had it hanging here for years. And one of my students asked me if he could go show it someplace. And I said, sure, but it never came back. I ain't want to do that. But you don't need a ring cutter. Get rid of the ring. Okay? Enough on that. I got one more thing. I'm thinking about getting back into turning. And I thought I'd turn some wood. <clears throat> I don't have any wood. One guy from Hawaii sent me a beautiful piece. I'm going to put that on a Lazilla. Ron, you all know Ron. Ron sent me some floor deck out of a aircraft carrier that I'm going to make pens out of. Ruth Nile sent me some blocks of laminated plywood that I make bottle stoppers out of. But I'm always in the market for some good wood. So if you got a piece you cut up and you got a little bit of, you know, whatever. Send it to me. I'll do something with it. Then I'll send you a picture of it and make you really feel bad. <laughs> all right. Well, with all that in mind, I got today was trash can day, so I got some empty trash cans I can fill up. And while I'm talking to you, uh, that list is getting longer and longer and longer. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and thanks for joining me because we've been making shavings. Take care, be good, go to my website, check it out, eddiecastellan.com, and you can always call me. Be good. i got to come up with a ninja stance for a spot.
No? Okay. I'm with your vote.